grateful because uh, we know that God's a healer. If God is able to raise people who are dead back to life, why can't God heal any health condition? If God is able to do it, if he did it in the past, why can't he do it again? If, if, if certain things worked in the past, if the supernatural, the miraculous working power of God worked in the past, why can't it work today? And uh, that's why we're getting into this new collection called, called, uh, called Old Oil But New Battles. Old Oil But New Battles. And we're talking about how the things of the old, the old methods still work today. They still work today. I don't know about you, but I haven't heard of a new blood that Jesus shed on the cross. There's not a new blood. It's the old blood that he shed thousands of years ago. But that same old blood still is in effect till today. That means that the same things, the same things of the supernatural, the same things of the prophetic, the same things of healing are still in operation today and still do work. What I find is we've come a generation where we're pushing new age Christianity on old principles that were set in stone from, from times past. And I believe that God is reshaping and he's resetting our understanding right now in this moment as to what it really means to still carry the old oil in a new day. It, it, do you, see, you see, the thing is that issues and sins don't change. It's the same sins that have been there all these wilds. But we need to understand that we can't use new methods to fight against something that's been there from time ago. We got to go back to the old stuff, the old stuff, the old stuff, the old stuff. I remember uh, when, my, when, my, when, my, uh, when my grandma used to bathe us and, uh, you know, those baths were the best baths. What she would use is she would use Vaseline and she used some powder even. And, you know, uh, I think this week we started talking about how that powder just hits different. You know what I'm saying? Like it just hits different. You know, I got to go back to using that old stuff. I make my skin all clear and everything. But it's so important to realize that some things that happen in the old are still good today. And I find sometimes, Brayden, that we like to reinvent the wheel. But I believe that in this collection, God is going to begin to shape our thoughts and shape our, our mindset as to how we can still implement the things of old today. All right? And so I'm grateful. I'm excited for it. I want to appreciate my brother, our, our millennial oversight, Pastor Kofi, for being with us here today. Mighty man of God, is this how you're doing it? Don't embarrass me now. Don't embarrass me. In the chat, I want you to appreciate the man of God for being here. PK, we love you. Thank you for your sacrifice and thank you for being here today. Grateful, grateful. Uh, I, I want to also take this opportunity to thank every single one of you for that amazing birthday service uh, that you had for me. I was so surprised. When I came uh, a couple weeks ago, I was on fire. I'm, t I'm like, I'm ready to preach the word of God. I come here and it's, it's, a, it's a takeover. And so I, I want to thank you guys for working behind my back. And, you know, it got so bad that even the staff here, they even put together a fake uh, schedule of the service. And so I saw it. I'm giving edits. No, let's do this, let's do that. And all of a sudden, you know, I get here and it's, you know, we even had to lie to you. And so I forgive you in advance. Um, but thank you guys so much for that. I also want to uh, give God glory because we had an amazing Easter uh uh, service last week as well and we believe that God did what he needed to do and uh, we're grateful that we're in this new collection here today hey let's stand on our feet today and read this text and then we'll grab our we'll grab our seats we're in first Corinthians 4 verse 15 to 17 in the New King James Version if you're at home I want you to do me a favor go and grab your Bibles we believe here that the Bible the leather it just hits different you know there's certain things that just hit different the leather just hits differently so do yourself a favor go grab your Bibles um, if not you could use your phone that's fine um, but uh, let's turn our, our attention to the Word of God and believe God to do something great today here we go the Bible says for though you might have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers, for in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Verse 16, this is where I want us to pitch our tent here today. It says, therefore, I urge you to imitate me, shall imitate me, shall imitate me, therefore I urge you to what? Imitate me, imitate me, imitate me. For this reason, I have sent Timothy to you, who is my beloved and faithful son in the Lord, who will remind you 
of my ways in Christ. Sometimes we need some Holy Ghost reminders, some Holy Ghost reminders that this is how you should be doing things, some Holy Ghost reminders who will remind you of my ways in Christ as I teach everywhere in every church. I want to speak to you for a few minutes today from the thought, it's just not working. It's just not working. It's just not working. Throw that in the chat real quick. Say, it's just not working. It's it's just it's just not working. I want you to shout to your neighbor real quick. Look at them. Don't go near them, COVID. But I want you to, to just say, it's just not working. It's just, it's just, it's just not working. It's just not working. Father God, have your way today. In your name I pray. Amen. Please grab your seats real quick. Uh, it's just not working. I I, I find sometimes. Um, that my mom gets into this phase and into this pack and she has this mom pack where she has this whole thing where it's just like she just doesn't like to waste things I don't know whose mom is like that but your mom like she, my mom just does not like to waste things it doesn't matter what those things are she just won't waste it I mean it doesn't matter if it's food oh, you're gonna finish that food <laughs> if you're not gonna finish that food bring it to me put it in my plate put it in my plate and I'll eat it for you I don't know I don't know if it might be a ganyan thing or what have you but but my mom she, she, there's, there's like a no wasting pack that she gets into and it's like I don't know how she got that pack, but she just she just she just has it. She embodies it. We're, we're not wasting that food, even when it's even when it's uh, even when it's money. No, no, we we have sweet. We have some food at home. We don't need to spend money on that. We're not wasting nothing like that. Whether it's even school supplies. Hello, somebody. School supplies, you know, we uh, there's what, four, three of us in the house, four of us in the house, four boys, and, um, you know, my brother's older, and I'm second, and then, you know, Ray and Reggie, and sometimes we go through school, and school season, and school semester, and, you know, we'd have to pass down certain rulers, or certain um, crayons, you know, the Crayola crayons, not, you know, the, the Crayola crayons, not the Dollarama ones, the Crayola ones, you gotta go to, to Staples for those ones, um, you know, those crayons, and she passed those down from personal person why do we have to do that mom why can't we just get some new crayons some new um some some, some new uh, crayons or what have you um uh, and some new pencils she said no no we're, we're not wasting that we're not wasting it there's there's a no wasting pack when it comes to my mother and, and she honestly she she lives in it she'll make she'll make use of anything she'll reuse things until they can't be reused no more and sometimes i get frustrated because what she does is she like even tries to take this over even into like apple products where it's like even when she gets a charger, what she'll do is she won't even go to the Apple store. What she'll do is she'll just go to like the gas station and just try to get one of those bootleg like like iPhone chargers. And I'm like, Mom, why do you have this? Like you already know that this won't work. You got to get the real joints. You know, it, it, it won't work. You got to get the real joints. And so, of course, what happened is she go to the gas station and grab the charger and uh, she'd be trying to put in her phone. And, you know, for the first day, of course, as things always are, for the first day, you know, it works well. For the first day, our, the phone's charging perfectly. See, I told you guys that, that it will work. I told you, you, have, you guys just like to spend money too much. You're like, and you know, for the first day we let her talk, you know what, mom, you can get, you can get, you, you can get it off, it's fine, you can talk, whatever. The first day it works well, but then come on the second day and she, you know, she's trying to, she's trying to charge her phone and her phone isn't charging and it's almost like, mom, we told you about this charger. And we told you not to go there, but you still, for some reason, wanted to go and get this charger. I find her there. She's trying to fix it. You know, I, maybe I got to turn it this way or turn it that way. Maybe I got to fix the way the, the, the cord is positioned. And what I find is she, she finds herself trying to force the cord to work with the phone, trying to force the cord to work to charge the phone. And I, I honestly kind of feel like that's how we kind of do certain things. Even as teenagers, what we like to do is we like to force things. We like to force things to work. We like to force things, force relationships, force friendships, force jobs sometimes. We try to force motives. Oh, y'all gonna be quiet on me. You, you, try, you try to force motives. I mean, I, I try to force my way to get to this event. I need to be there and I'm gonna do anything that I gotta do to be there. What happens is we, we try to force certain things to work when they just aren't working. Sometimes what we try to do, right, is we try to force even this new age Christianity on old school principles that have been there for such a long time. There's something that I find that we, we're, we're subject to. We're, we, almost, we almost 
find ourselves in this like this this forcing generation. We we want to force certain things to work. We want to force certain girls to like us and force certain guys to like us. We find ourselves trying to force certain things to work. But sometimes has it ever occurred to you that maybe it's just not supposed to work? You don't need to force everything because maybe it's just not supposed to work. You, you don't need to force your, 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 your love on somebody because maybe it's just not supposed to work. You don't need to force certain motives because maybe it's just not supposed to work. Sometimes we find people even like positioning themselves for you to even just like build a relationship with somebody or friendship or what have you. But sometimes it's just not supposed to work. And I feel like God works in that way too, where sometimes... Things just aren't supposed to work. And I feel like God says, you know what, a lot of times us as teenagers, we try to force certain things into being. We try to force certain things to work, but sometimes they're honestly not meant to work. I feel like forcing can only take us so far. But after a certain amount of time, you'll then begin to realize the negative effects of that forcing. You'll begin to realize, like, you know, I, I remember having like hand-me-downs or whatever anybody had older brothers or sister hand-me-downs or older cousins and my cousins would come oftentimes and they would give me uh, their shirts and what have you and their pants and you know I love it so much because it was rich it was expensive I put it on it's like I'm trying to walk in it and my, I'm just like you know it's, it's all baggy on me but I love it so much and it's just like you look like a clown like why are you wearing that you know what I mean and you know, I try to force it to work and I mean, the first couple days or what have you, it, it looks fine, it works, I'm, I'm feeling great in it, but as you begin to prolong that period of forcing, what happens is the negative effects of that begin to show. You know something, even for example, like a shoe, right? Sometimes your, your older siblings or what have you, you can get a shoe and it might not fit you. Maybe it's like a .5 too big for you. And I remember this back in the day because my cousins would always give me their Jordans and I would love Jordans so much. And when they would give it to me, they obviously had bigger, bigger foot sizes than me, but I would put it on. I'd be like, yo, don't worry. Like it works. Bless. Don't worry. Like it's fine. Don't worry. And they'd be like, nah, it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit. And I'd be like, yo, trust me. Don't worry. It's fine. It's fine. And I'd be trying to walk in it. And all of a sudden, like, you know, when they leave and the, the next day comes and the day after, it's like, yo, I, like, I'm literally like wearing some clown shoes. Why am I trying to force this? It only shows after a certain amount of time. It only shows when you try to force things. The negative effects only come after a certain amount of time. I find sometimes that we try to force new methods, new ways of dealing with things, new ways of dealing with God on a God who's been alive even before the world began. We have to understand that his ways aren't changing. His ways aren't changing. He stays the same. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. God is stuck in his ways. He won't change. He's the same God. But sometimes what we try to do is we try to find new methods to deal with certain things. And you know what the Bible says? The Bible says this. The Bible says literally to come to me all who are burdened and I will give you rest. That's what the word of God says. What we then come and do, Alpha, what we tend to do is we go to our friends and we talk to them about our situations, and we talk to them about our issues, and we find that our issues go from one issue to five issues, and our issues just begin to multiply. Why? Because God says to come to him, and he will give us rest, but we're trying to go to our friends for them to give us rest. God's saying, you're breaching certain things. I'm the same old God. Come to me. Come to me, and I will give you rest. It's the same God. The old methods, come to me, I'll, t I'll carry your burdens for you. Come to me, and I'll take that stress from you. Come to me, and I'll show you how to go through things. Don't go to your friends. No, come to me, and I will show you how. Oftentimes, we get things confused because we want to put new methods on an old God. But what happens when we put new methods on an old God is we find ourselves in new issues and new problems and in new things that we shouldn't be in. The Bible tells us here, it says, be anxious for nothing, but come to me through prayer supplication and thanksgiving be anxious for nothing we find ourselves going to our friends and our family i'm anxious or we try to try to fill 
that, that void and try to fill that hole in our hearts of, of anxiety. We, we try to fill that with certain substances, certain parties, certain motives, certain things just to fill that void. But God tells us, he says, listen, come to me. He says, he says, he says, be anxious for nothing. Come to me and I will give you rest. Come to me and, and come to me with prayer and supplication. God didn't say to go and speak to 10,000 people about your issues. No, he said to come to me. Lay your burdens, cast your burdens upon me. If you cast your burdens upon yourself or upon your friends, they don't have the ability, they don't have the, the range to help you. He says, come to me. It's the same God, same method, same God, same method. Don't try to change it. Yes, there are new battles, new things that we're dealing with, new, new motives, new what have you. But it's the same solution to deal with those things and what happens if we get into trouble when we try to change those things with God sometimes God just honestly says listen you have to understand that I am this the God of Abraham the God of Isaac the God of Jacob I'm that same old God from back in the day 2,000 years ago and I don't like these new methods I'm in my old ways I I, I uh, had this this thought today to to grab something. I didn't know my brother would be here. Pastor Kobe would be here, but I, I just I said, you know what? Let me just throw this up here, and it's great because we can talk about this because we need to actually get into the nitty gritty. Do you mind throwing that up for me, guys? Um, throwing that up for me if you if you can. And you know, all you guys watching online and at home and in the room, this is myself and my brother Pastor Kofi. And as you can see, it's beautiful how my mom just literally took so much pleasure in dressing us up as twins. And it's like, I don't understand what, like where that pack came from because we're not twins. <laughs> My brother's a full year older than me. But as you can see in this picture, we're both wearing these double-breasted navy blue ties. Come on, you can't talk to us. We're, we're both wearing our, 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 our patterned ties. We got our, our, our birthday hats on, on our heads. I think that might have been the birthday where we were crying because we said that we wanted Barney to come to our birthday. And as soon as Barney came to our birthday, we started running away from Barney. Like, we, <laughs> we, we, start, <laughs> we, we started running away. <laughs> You know, it's, it's great. It's almost like sometimes when, when, when we ask God for certain things and God gives us those things and when we get those things, we say, God, we don't want it no more. <laughs> we want, and, and this is honestly what happened. We see, we see here when Barney came, we started running away. And so, you know, in, in the other picture, you see my brother, we're holding hands. I don't know why I was looking so sad. <laughs> But he's there smiling, and as you can see, my mom just enjoyed dressing us as twins. She honestly dressed us as twins, and it, it's 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 interesting because when you're when you're really young, you see what, what it's beautiful because when you're really young, it's 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 nice how you can imitate your siblings. You can imitate them when you're young. You can dress the same. You can twin. It's beautiful. People look at you like, oh, it's so beautiful. Like I can't believe they're wearing the same thing. It's so cute. Like. For real, like you can imitate them, right? And it's beautiful. But the thing is that when you begin to grow, <laughs> when you begin to grow and you start twinning and you, you start you start doing the same things, talking the same way, wearing the same clothes, going to the same places, it's like it's not cute no more. You know, imagine like, you, you know, um, uh, my, my cousins, uh, not my cousins, my, my baby nieces and nephews, um, you know, what, what they do is they like play peekaboo and they play like, you know, the peekaboo game what have you and right now it's beautiful oh they're so cute but then when they grow up and they're still trying to play peekaboo it's like that is not like it's not it's not a thing things are usually like it's it's, it's usually nice to imitate somebody and something and someone when you're much younger it's cute you know it's beautiful but I feel like in our generation that as you begin to grow and you continue to imitate them it's almost like it's beef it's like, why are you copying me? Why are you copying my drip? Why are you wearing the same clothes as I'm wearing? Like, why are we wearing the same thing? In our household, you know, we, we're, we're kind of, uh, uh, we're, we're very weary of buying the same things because we all want to have our own drip. And so before anybody buys something, like, yo, are you going to get this? Are you going to get that? There's, there's these new shoes that Ray wants to get, and it's like he's already put dibs on them. Like, yo, I'm getting these. Nobody get these because I'm getting these, Right? And so when you're imitating somebody, when you get old, it's not wavy no more. Like, why are you trying to steal my drip? But I, I, I love this. When we look at the definition of what it means to imitate, what, what, imitation is when you are honestly trying to take 
or follow a model after something or someone. When you're trying to take or you're trying to follow the model of something or someone, another definition of imitation is when you're trying to copy. When you're trying to copy somebody, that's what it means to imitate. And I know that in our culture right now, when you're trying to copy somebody, it means that what? It means that you're unoriginal. I mean, you can shout out to me, unoriginal, what else? It means that you're what? Fake. It means that you, you, don't, you're, you don't got your own drip. You don't, you don't have your own sauce. It means that you, like, you're just stealing everybody's sauce. You're unoriginal. That's what it means in our, in our day and age. But the real definition is to copy, to imitate. I, I love this so much because Apostle Paul in this text is talking to us about imitation. And he's talking to us about how he's been through so many things in his life. I mean, Apostle Paul, he's been somebody who pretty much wrote like more than half of the New Testament. Somebody who's been on roads, who's been beaten, he's been bruised, he's been thrown rocks at, he's been cussed out, he's been homeless, he's been poor, he's been in jail. He's done all these things over his, his, his years of being in, in Christianity. And what he does is he tells the church in Corinth, he's talking to these people, he's saying, listen, let me put you on game real quick. Let me put you on game, all right? I know that you guys have a thousand influences and people who speak into your ear, and I know you have a thousand friends, I know you have a thousand social media outlets, I know you have a thousand um, um, snaps and a thousand like Instagrams and a thousand posts, and you're seeing so many things from all over the world. You're seeing even TikToks, and TikTok is even becoming your instructor now. You believe TikTok over what your parents say. You believe TikTok over what your friend, you believe TikTok over what everybody says. It's TikTok, it's TikTok. And Apostle Paul saying, I know you have all these methods of learning. I know that you have a thousand. He even, he even like exaggerates. He says, I know you guys have thousands of instructors, people to teach you, people to show you how. But let me put you on game and show you what God has showed me over my years of being with him. You see, when, when people who have been in, in, in ministry for a long time are speaking, you have no choice but to listen. Why? Because they've been in the thing for longer than you have. He says, let me put you on game real quick. He says this. He says, I've walked, I've journeyed through Israel. I've journeyed all over Asia. I've journeyed through Russia. I've journeyed all over to Spain, all over Europe. And one thing that I need to tell you is this, is that you'll be better off if you would copy me. He says this, he says, I urge you. What it means when, when somebody's urging you to do something, what it means is I desperately desire for you. I desperately desire for you to imitate me. You can steal my drip, I don't mind. You can steal my sauce, I don't mind. You can copy me, I don't mind. Because what I do know is I've, I've literally I found a secret. I've, I found a key, and this key has kept me all this way through my entire life. I know what it means to speak with God. I know what it means to pray. I know what it means to carry myself in the community. I know what it means to do all these things. But he says, he says, imitate me. I urge you to do so. I desire you to do so. I desire you to imitate me. Because if you imitate me, I know that you'll reach to where I've gotten to. I don't know about you, but oftentimes I find as, as teens, what we like to do is we like to reinvent the wheel. We like to do things our own way. Why? Because I just want to, I just want to do it my way. It's, I, I'm not trying to copy no, but I want to do my way. Everybody's going right, you just want to go left. Why do you have to go left? Apostle Paul's saying here, he said, imitate me, copy me. Because I know that once you do so, you'll be on course to a great walk with God. There are so many battles that I faced in life. And I'm trying to put you on game that the only way you can get through these battles is if you begin to have this intimate relationship with Jesus. Is If you begin to relate to Jesus the same way that I have been relating to Jesus, that's the only way you'll be able to go through all these new battles. I find that in this generation, Brandon, that... We like to reinvent the wheel, and we like to honestly, like, step in, and we like to honestly, like, create our own paths, but we don't have to do that. 
when we, you know, when we think about even in wintertime, uh, you know, when I used to take the bus and stuff like that, I know a lot of us do take the bus. When we would take the bus and we're trying to, like, walk to class or walk to school or busing, wherever. You see, like, you see how some people, like, if they've been there before, if they got off before, you see, like, their, their footsteps, like, their trails, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can literally, like, step in, you can step into their, into their trails, into their footsteps. And then once you step into their footsteps, you'll be blessed. Like, you literally won't get no snow on you. Why? Because they've already created a path for you to go on. But I find that it's difficult when we as teenagers, when we as young people, when we want to create our own path in the snow when there's already a path created for us. If there's already a path that has been tried and tested, if there's already an old method that has been tried and tested, why is it that we always want to reinvent how we do things, how we relate to an old God? I find that if we begin to follow Christ as Paul did, as people in the Bible did, if we began to relate to Christ this way, we'll be in a much, much better place. We have to understand, guys, that the new ways just aren't working. My dad says this oftentimes. He says, listen, there is literally such a handful of people who relate to God as he should be related to, like how individuals in the Bible did. There's a handful of people but I believe strongly that God is raising up a remnant of youth, a remnant of teens who will understand that doing things the old way, fasting, prayer, interceding, doing things that way is greater than trying to find a new way to relate to an old God. His ways don't change. I love this. Because when we begin to realize that we need to relate to God that same old way, We'll begin to understand that God will be mindful of us. We'll begin to understand that God will literally pick us up from where we are and bring us closer to where he is. There's no new thing that God is desiring from us. He's desiring for us to relate to him that old way that other people literally were doing so in the past. I honestly believe that Paul is saying that if you follow me, you're not unoriginal. If you follow me, you're actually wise. Because if you've seen somebody, like wisdom would suggest, if you've seen somebody do something, and that thing has been proven and it's been tested, it's been tried, it's been, it's been perfected, why would you then go and try to invent your own thing? Paul is saying, this is the wisdom, this is the game that I want to put you on. And honestly, I believe that it's so important that i rather copy Paul than to be sorry in life. Like, I'd rather copy his ways and the ways of God than to be sorry in life. i honestly rather do so than to get to a place in life and say, you know what? I try to do this thing my way, but it just didn't work. I'd rather copy than, than, than be sorry in the future. I'd rather imitate than to make mistakes in life. Like, I'd rather copy and imitate than to go through life making a bunch of mistakes that I don't necessarily need to make. Yeah, I didn't create, I didn't create my own path. That's fine. But I'd rather understand and know that Jesus created this path for me and the path that he created for me is better than any path that I could ever create for myself. We need to understand that God's path has been tried and tested and his path is greater than any path that we could ever create for ourselves. And what happens is when we try to create our own path, we become lost. We get lost in the sauce. We start doing things. Start doing random things, random incartations, random things. We'll start saying things like, I don't need to pray. God hears my thoughts, so I don't need to pray no more. Why does the Bible then say to pray in the spirit? Because when you do so, you are then edifying your spirit. Why does the Bible say to then pray in tongues as you do so? You're edifying your spirit. Why does the Bible say to pray without ceasing? You see, we'll get caught up in this generation. We'll say, you know, your, your God's grace is sufficient. Yes, God's grace is sufficient, but you don't necessarily need to abuse the grace of God. See, that's when we get into this new ways type of Christianity, but God's saying this. He says, yes, approach me and come boldly to the throne of grace and you can receive mercy from me. But it's not every time that we need to literally go to that place and abuse his mercy and abuse his grace. 
There's this new age Christianity that I find that people are trying to push this to. But I believe that God is saying this. You know what? We're going too far. We got to come back a little bit. We got we're, we're, we to come back a little bit. We got we to gotta come back to how things really are. His path is greater than any path that I could ever create for ourselves. I love what the Bible says here in, in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 3. We find that David was literally on his deathbed, and he's telling his son Solomon, he's saying, Solomon, I need you to do these things, and if you're able to do these things, I promise you that you'll be better in life. He says this, the Bible says this, it says now, the Bible says this in, uh, in 2 Kings 2, verse 3, it says, do what the Lord, your God, tells you. It says, walk in his ways, keep all his laws and his word by what is written in the law of Moses, then you will do well in all that you do and in every place that you go. That's what the word of God says. It says, do what the Lord your God tells you to do and to walk in his ways. You see, we understand this, that the ways of God have already been designed for us. The ways of God are already there. But the Bible is telling us, and, and David is telling his son, he's saying, listen, walk in the ways. I've walked with God for all these years. Walk in the same ways. Walk in the same ways. Walk in the same ways. I charge you to walk in the same ways, in the same statutes. Walk in his ways. The Bible tells us here that even Moses, when God was speaking to Moses, God was telling Moses in Psalm 103, 7, says that, and God made known his ways, the how-to, he made, made known his ways to Moses, but he made known his acts to all the people of Israel. He made known his ways, though, to Moses. God has already made known his ways. He's already told us everything we need to know. It's already in the Bible. It's already in the Bible. Let's not try to deviate and try to reinvent the wheel and try to do certain things that God did not tell us to do. It's so important to realize that the God that we serve is in the simple things. We find so many people trying to complicate God and try to say that God is this and God is that. No, he's actually in the simple things. He's in the quiet things. He's in the simple things. He's in the same old method, but it could be presented in a new way. Back in the day, people weren't preaching like this. They weren't wearing Air Force Ones to preach. They were wearing Jesus 3000 slippers and sandals. You know what I'm saying? They were open toe shoes. You know what I'm saying? They were wearing these long type of dress, you know, standing on boats to preach. We're not doing that right now, but it's the same gospel that we're preaching. It's the same power, the same fire that we're preaching. It's the same old method presented in a new way. In five years, I pray that we won't be communicating the same way. Why? Because there's going to be different ways to communicate but we need to understand that it's the same old oil uh, find me in an airplane with my glasses on anointed prayed up I prayed through the night the oil is still there I can look like this like I'm chilling like I'm cooling but the oil is still there it's the same old oil that I've been trying to go after the same old anointing the same old power that we're looking for in this generation it's not enough to try to reinvent certain things. Oh, yeah, God doesn't heal no more. God doesn't prophesy no more. God can't save people no more. No, it's, it's not true. It's just presented in a different way. If we had Jesus freak over our forehead, people won't, people won't talk to us. But now we find ourselves in this season where it's the same old gospel, the same old oil, the same old methods but we got to present it in a different way. That's why God has called us to be all things to all people. Where yes, we can look presentable and look like we're in the culture, but have the same old anointing from that in the olden days. I pray that that, that same grace will come over you today, wherever you're watching from, that that anointing, that old stock anointing, that old anointing that your mama would have when she's in the kitchen cleaning and she's praying and you're on her back and that anointing is coming over you. And that same old oil, when my dad is walking around the church, he's holding my hand and we're praying together. I pray that that same old anointing 
will come and hit you today wherever you are. We deviate too much from the olden ways, but I pray today that that same grace will locate you today. We need that same old oil. We need that same old fire. There's so many new battles over this generation, but we can't do those things with the new methods. We got to go back to the old methods and try to knock down that mountain. What is fentanyl? What is pornography? What are these things to God? God says that I gave you the method. It's in the Bible. Come to me and I will give you rest. Come to me. I have the answers. I have the solutions. I know how to do it, but you got to use the old methods to fight these new battles. God is saying that we got to go back to the days of the old. We got to go back to the days of the old where young people will come together and pray all night until something happens. We got to go back to the same days where God's saying that I will cause I will cause young people to prophesy. These are the same days that we've been prophesying about. God is saying that this is the season. This is the hour where he's calling us back to that place of prayer. Calling us back to that place where he is. We got to get to that place in God again. We got to get back to that place. That place of fasting. That place of prayer. That place of the anointing. That place of its goodness. That place. That place. I don't know about you, but I'm going back to that place. 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 Yes, Lord. And see. When I try to deviate, when I try to move on, I try to tell God, I tell God, say, God, if I try to move from what you've called me to do, I want you, God, to sit on me, God. When I try to move, when I try to do things a new way, I tell God, God, sit on me, Lord. Don't let me go. Don't let me do what I want to do, God. Sit on me, Lord Jesus. Let your Holy Spirit sit on me. I don't want a new things a new way. I want to stick to the old ways. Father, sit on me. Me, Lord, don't let me go. Don't let me go. Don't let your spirit go. Don't let your spirit leave me. I need the old way. I need the old thing. I need the old thing. I need the old thing. I need the old oil. 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 I need it, 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 I need it. Woo. You see, when we try to do things a new way and try to crack a new code in God, what happens is we begin to we, we begin to go off the rails. And we begin to say things that God never said. And I pray today that God will restrain us. When we want to do our own things, God, restrain me. When I try to go this way and I try to do something new, God, restrain me. Restrain this generation, God. We don't need a new code. We want the old code. We don't need a new method. We want the old method. Restrain me, God. Keep me grounded in your love. Keep me grounded in your oil. Keep me grounded in the old things. The only way to win this new battle is with the old methods it's with the old oil oh god 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 you see you can't do your own thing if the holy spirit is sitting on you you see, what happens right now in our generation is we don't even know what it feels like nowadays for the Holy Spirit to sit upon us, for the anointing of God to sit upon us. Why? Because we've told everybody that you don't need to pray no more, that you don't need to fast no more, and so we're such a fleshly generation. But I promise you, and take my word for it, when you get into that space where you're fasting and praying, and you're reading the word of God, and you're worshiping, and you're doing your best to live a holy and righteous life, you'll feel the Holy Spirit. 
deeper sit on you and you'll try to move and you say I feel the anointing of God I feel the presence of God you want the Holy Spirit to sit on you when the Holy Spirit sits on you there's nothing that you can't do that's when the impossible becomes possible that's when people begin to be raised from the dead that's when people's arms begin to grow that's when people begin to receive the direct word of God these things are not possible if you don't allow the Holy Spirit to sit on us I want you to shout Holy Spirit sit on me shout Holy Spirit sit on me Holy Spirit sit on me Holy Spirit sit on me when I try to lose myself Holy Spirit sit on me where would I be if you didn't sit on me where would I go if you don't sit on me? How would I act if I don't if you don't sit on me? Holy Spirit, sit on me. Use me. Sit on me. Sit on me, God. Like syrup sits on pancakes. Sit on me, God. Like ketchup sits on fries. Sit on me, Holy Spirit. Sit on me, Lord. Sit on me, Jesus. Rest on me, God. Rest on me, Lord. Rest on me, Lord. Rest on me, Lord. Sit on me, Jesus. Don't let me go. If you let me go, I'll miss my destiny. If you let me go, I'll miss it all. God, sit on me. Rest on me. I want the old ways. I want the old ways. I want the old things. I'll imitate you. I'll copy you. I'll imitate you. I'll copy you. If that's what will bring me to where I need to be. Oh God, sit on our generation. Oh God, sit on our church. Holy Spirit, do it now. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Even now. speak over. 
Lord says that this is the hour, this is the time where he gives you a heart of boldness and a heart for you to step into what he's called you to do. But the Lord says that the time is coming and the time is now where I even see even a magazine to say the spirit of the Lord God and I even see the Lord even causing you to step out into the deep and the Lord would have me say this that the Lord isn't done with you but he's just starting with you and what he's doing now will carry over into the lives of your siblings for the Holy Spirit says that this will even carry into another generation for I even see the Lord even giving you a heart to even uh, open up a business where it seems like there's almost even like writing that's going on and I see the Lord saying now that this thing that he's doing will be something that is passed on from generation to generation but the Lord says that he's even giving you the heart right now to do it for I'm even seeing right now that the heart that you've been looking for to do it, the resources have been a problem, have been problematic. But the Lord says even now, he's working it out for your good. He's working it out for you even now. Yes, Lord. He's doing it even now. Listen to the Spirit of God. He's doing it even now. I even hear the word of the Lord for Brian. For, for Bri Bri for Brian, I hear the Lord say that he's calling you out and he's calling you to walk on water. He's calling you to do what nobody's ever done before. The Lord says even now that you'll begin to step into a higher level. You'll begin to step into a higher calling. It's a higher purpose. The Lord even says to be ready, get ready, because he's about to even come and meet you in your dreams. I hear the Lord say that he's about to literally step into your dreams and he'll begin to show you what you've been placed on earth to do. But the Lord would have me tell you that you've been searching for so long, but very shortly the Lord says that he's about to step into your dreams and he'll begin to show you his mind. He'll begin to show you your future. He'll begin to show you what you've been placed on earth to do. That's say the spirit of the Lord God. For I hear the Lord say that you're about to step into a level of faith that you've never had before. There's about to be a level of faith, a level of faith that the Lord is calling you to. You'll step on it, you'll step into it, and you'll see the Lord move so mightily. I say the Spirit of God. Oh, Jenny, I hear the Lord say that he's been working at the wheel in your life. The other day when Jeremiah went to the potter's house, the potter was working at the wheel was developing and it was creating certain pieces, certain things. He was creating certain things at the wheel. The Lord says that he's been taking his time to create something in your life. For I hear the Lord say that he's even bringing you into a higher level of influence. And the Lord says that he's even creating and he's even shaping your heart and shaping your mind right now to even get ready for that influence that is coming. For I'm even seeing, even, um, um, I'm even seeing modeling opportunities from even seeing like an agency i hear the lord even say i hear the lord even say that there's going to be certain people that will just come to you looking for guidance looking for a relationship looking for help and the lord says that he's giving you to influence the leadership he's shaping you he's working at the wheel right now to prepare you for that place the, the spirit of god to his people right now i hear the lord say that even grace i don't know who you are but the lord says that grace is locating you but the lord says that he will give you the grace to do so he'll give you the ability to do so he'll give you the anointing to do so the lord says that whatever you put your mind to do whatever you put your mind to do he'll help you to accomplish it let's say the spirit of god he'll help you to accomplish it whatever you put your mind to do will be available, ideas will be available, opportunities will be available, finances and resources will be available, the same spirit of God, it will be, it will be available, it will be available, it will be available, it's available, it's available in this room, 
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we're so grateful for your love, Lord Jesus. We praise you. We adore you. We worship you. Thank you, Spirit of God, for who you are, Lord. We thank you. Have your way, Jesus, today. In your mighty name I pray. Amen. I want to encourage you. Yeah, give it to God. Give it to God. Yes, Jesus. And when I lose myself, Lord, sit on me. When I lose myself, Lord, sit on me. When I lose myself, Lord, sit on me. When I lose it, God, Lord, sit on me, Jesus.